Ava, and this week on Anime Cons TV, I'm going to talk to you about using interfacing. Interfacing is something that you fuse to fabric to make it stiffer, and it's a great technique if you're a beginning cosplayer trying to find a ways to take your costumes to the next level and make them more intermediate level costumes, then learning what interfacing is and how to use it is a great way to do that. I know that when we were doing our first costumes, later on when we learned how to use interfacing, we really wished we'd use them because it makes a big difference, and it makes your costumes look a lot cleaner. Uh, you can actually use interfacing for lots of different things. Um, for example, here's a costume I just finished for Dragon Con, and I used it in several places on here. Um, I used it in these little bands on the arm just to make them stronger. Um, I also used them in the waistband of the apron because I wanted that to be nice and flat and stiff. Um, but most often, you actually see it in bows. Um, here's a typical bow right here that's actually going to be the back of this apron. Um, I don't ever try to tie my aprons or tie anything in the back of my costume, a sash or uh, bows in my hair, anything. I don't try to tie them and make them look like this kind of cartoony bow. I actually make the bow ahead of time and then you just stick it on wherever you have to use it and it's perfect already. Um, with the interfacing you also can kind of change the shape of the bow so you can kind of change the fold a little bit and make it stick in a different shape or if you like it this way um, and you can actually use multiple layers of interfacing to make it stick out even more so I'm going to show you how to make a bow because I thought that was the easy example of how to use interfacing and we'll try that um, so let me get this out of the way so this is what interfacing looks like uh, you can buy it either by the yard or most people buy it as a whole bolt. This would be covered in plastic. You can buy it in the fabric store that way just because it's cheaper and you end up using a lot of it over the course of all of your cosplays so you might as well just have it lying around with all of your other uh, costuming supplies. Uh, one side is fuzzy and the other side has little bumps on it that are the uh, adhesive. So what you want to do is cut out the fabric that you want to attach the interfacing to. I have two layers. One of them will have the interfacing and one of them will not. Now if I really wanted to make this uh, incredibly stiff, if I was doing something where it really had to be very rigid and maybe this was flimsier fabric than I wanted to use for that because the color was right or the texture was right or whatever, um, I could actually put interfacing on both sides. But most often you're just going to be using one layer of interfacing. So that's what we're going to do right now. So the first thing you want to do is make sure your fabric is nice and flat before you put the interfacing on. So go over it with a nice hot iron. Then you want to lay one piece of your fabric onto the interfacing so that you can cut out a good shape. Um, I'm putting the bumps are up right now. So this is the side with the adhesive. So this is the side that's going to stick to this side of the fabric. And so my good side of the fabric should be up. Now the fabric I'm using right now doesn't really have a good or bad side, so it doesn't matter. But if you had a really pretty side and a not so pretty side, you want the not so pretty side to be on the side with the bumps. So now I'm going to cut out a piece of interfacing to match the shape as close as I can to the piece of fabric I want to adhere it to. And the reason I try to get as close as possible is when I'm ironing I don't want to get the adhesive on my iron because that's no fun. So I get as close as possible and then I'm going to iron the fabric side and the heat from the iron is going to activate those little bumps and adhere the interfacing to my fabric. So you always want to iron the, the fabric side. You don't want to flip this over and iron the interfacing side because that can cause wrinkles in your fabric. So it's better to do it this way. Depending on how thick your fabric is and how big of a piece you're doing, you might have to do it for longer. See, that's not quite stuck yet. So we're going to make sure it's stuck. I try to get all the edges where it might peel back. There we go. So now the interfacing is stuck to our fabric. Now if we were going to do it on both sides we would um, do the same thing with this piece and then when we sewed them we would put the interfacing sides out but because we're only doing one side we have the interfacing side out on this side and then this would be the bad side of the fabric on that side. Now that we have that done, we've quickly pinned them. Since this is a small one, it doesn't take very long. Together, 
and then we're going to sew them bad side to bad side leaving a small opening so that we can flip it right side up just like we would if we were doing this without interfacing all the interfacing is doing is serving as a backing to make it stiffer all right so now it's ready to be sewn all right so now we're going to sew around the edge um, where we're going to turn the bow inside out is going to be the middle of the bottom of the bow so i'm starting in the middle and that way i can go all the way around without stopping so i'm leaving some space for where the uh the hole is going to be and i'm just doing a regular straight stitch around the edge When I go to turn the corner, I just leave the needle down so I don't even have to stop my line. I can just turn the fabric around the needle. Stop so I have this space to turn it inside out. Now before I do that, I'm quickly going to check the back and make sure I caught both sides of the fabric. And I did, so that's good. And then I'm quickly going to use my pinking shears to cut around the edge as close to the um, sewing line as possible. That way we don't have a lot of extra fabric inside when we turn this inside out. And the pinking shears, all they do is stop the fabric from fraying. That's why I'm using them instead of regular scissors. Um, that way you don't have a lot of frayed edges. And if it frays too much, it could fray through the, um, the, the line that you just have sewn. And that's not good because that will make a hole. really close to the edge on this side but it looks okay and the last thing I want to do before I oh I missed the thread before I turn this right side out is to cut diagonally at the corners and the reason you do that is so this fabric doesn't get bunched up in the corners and you still get a pointy corner otherwise you just get kind of a an icky corner but you just gotta be careful not to get too close to the thread otherwise you make a hole all right so now we're ready to turn this right side out okay so now we're ready to take that little hole we made and turn our entire thing inside out now how big you make the hole you want to make it as small as you can without making it too small to turn it inside out I always kind of push it with how small I can make it because the smaller you make the hole the less you have to try to hide it later or hand stitch it up um, but you'd be surprised what you can kind of get away with this is just going to make it um, so I usually start by doing this with my fingers and get as much of it as I can by hand I usually try to get the bulk of it pushed through This is easier with a bow because it's a rectangle. When I do things like a waistband or another arm band, it's usually a long um, tube, and that always is annoying to turn inside out. I usually need a little more outside assistance with a, a stick or a knitting needle. But with a bow, it's not so bad to get the bulk of it done by hand. All right, 
right, so now that I have most of it turned out, I usually take, you can use a knitting needle, you can use any kind, this is actually a bamboo chopstick um, that we usually like to use, because you don't want something with a sharp end, because that will poke a hole through your seam. You want to use something with a blunt end that's still small and a little pointy. And we use that just to try to get those corners, get all the edges turned. Make sure we get that seam out and those corners that we cut so we can get a nice sharp corner as much as possible. And that's really what these are for, is for getting your corners. And this always looks really messy and not like anything at this point, but that's okay. That's what irons are for. And so once we get that seam all poked out, we kind of smooth it out there and usually there's one side where the seams show and one side where they don't show as much you kinda wanna work with the side where they don't show as much and once you get that there you take your iron again and press that nice and flat so it actually looks nice again you can do both sides and now that it's ironed rather than being kind of a, a floppy piece of fabric it's still stiff because of the interfacing so to make my bow I just do this little accordion fold like this and what I will do is I will sew down the middle I'll put a pin for now to show where that's gonna go and when I sew down the middle stitch right here I have a bow and it will stay stiff and it will keep its shape no matter what because of that interfacing that's in there um, and what I'll do then is I usually take a, a small piece of fabric that I, I, I sew into like a tube I don't usually use interfacing for that part you don't usually need it and wrap it around um, so that it covers up the hole I just made right there so I don't even have to hand stitch that back together if I don't want to sometimes I do if it's big and it shows sometimes I don't bother if it's just gonna get covered up by the middle part but you can kinda see without being a hundred percent done that's your bow that's going in my hair So there you go I hope that was helpful um, that's kind of one of the basic ways you can use interfacing it's really easy to use um, some patterns call for it um, when you actually look at the pattern it will call for interfacing to make certain parts of the outfit stiffer but a lot of times we just use it where we feel we need it um, if we have found something that is a good fabric but we think it needs to be stiffened up or we know that this part of the costume really needs to look like it's a little more solid than just the fabric is gonna um, do that for us then it's a great tool and I hope you try it I hope you found this to be helpful See you next week.